Hi there. In the previous video, I've started the automated warehouse project. Now, let's continue and finish it. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Let's start the video. If you remember, these three steps were written to import, receive, and transport a box, to an empty rack. Now, the box must be stored. After reaching a box to its final position, the inverse of the receiving process, must be performed, to put a box into an empty rack. So, let me create a macro, includes three steps, to store the box. First, the fork's right actuator must be used, to move the transported box, to the right side of the crane. Note that, the crane has a sensor, whose name is at right. It is equal to true, when the forks are opened completely, at the right side of the crane. So, I can use it here, as the transition condition. At the next step, I must reset the lift actuator. Remember, I've enabled this actuator, during the receiving step, to lift the box. Well, this transition must be here. Like the receiving process, Let's determine a constant time, for this step, and also the next one. Well, after putting the box, the controller must turn off the fork's right actuator. Alright, after putting the box, the final step is that, the crane must go to its initial position, to receive another box. As I've explained in the previous video, I need to use number 55, as the next destination for the crane. Again, I can detect falling edge at the sensor, whose name is moving X, as the transition condition. It means the crane has reached its initial position.
Note that, these two transitions work similarly. Both of them detect the exact time, when the crane has stopped. The first one detects when the crane reaches to a specific empty rack, after the transporting step, and the second one, detects when the crane reaches its initial position. After that, the controller will go to the initial step, and the design sequence will be repeated. Now, let's compile the project to ensure it doesn't have any error. Note that, if the running mode variable be true or 1, the design sequence will be repeated. In other words, if the emergency button, stop, or reset push buttons have been pressed, the controller will remain in the initial step, and the design sequence won't be executed again. Well, before the simulating step, there is a simple and important point. The control POU, must be executed beside my SFC program. It was explained in the previous video. Now, let's simulate the warehouse project, using factory IO. As you see, my program is working correctly. Note that, if the stop push button is pressed, the process will be stopped at the end of the current sequence. But what about emergency conditions, that the process must be stopped immediately? Well, because I pressed the stop push button, the running mode variable is inactive. Again, I need to press the start push button, to start the design sequence. Alright, let's test this extended program. Only these steps have been added to the previous sequence. The main point is defining this flag, and using that inside the control POU. As you see, when either the emergency button or the reset push button is pressed, this flag will receive a pulse. In consequence, the controller will jump to this step, which was defined as the initial step. After jumping, if the emergency button is pressed, this step will be executed, otherwise, the controller will go to the reset step. The emergency step, has a main action, that turns off all actuators immediately, especially the crane. Well, the reset step has a similar action, with a little difference. This step turns off all actuators immediately, except the crane, which must go to its initial position. Note that, to move the crane, the sensor whose name is at middle, must be enabled. It means the crane's forks are not opened. The other steps have been explained and tested right now. Now. Let me use the push button lights to indicate the state of the automated warehouse system. For the extended section, let's turn on the reset light. As you know, at this step, the start push button must be pressed, to start the normal sequence to receive, transport, and store a box. So, 
let's use the start light for this step. Finally, let's turn on the stop light, when the normal process is executing. Well, this step was the initial step of the previous sequence. Now, let me change its name to normal sequence. Let's compile the project. Well, some errors have been detected. This step does not exist in my program. I've changed its name right now. So, let's select the normal sequence step. Now, Let's test the project. During that, I will use the emergency button and the reset push button, to see their effects on the design sequence. Remember, the demo version of Kepsiver X software must be stopped and started every 2 hours, and probably you will need to do the connection process again. Now, let's test the extended project. Let me press the emergency button. As you see, the crane has stopped immediately. Now, I need to press the reset push button. Again, if I press the start push button, the normal sequence will be started. After that, I'll press the reset push button to see its performance. Again, I need to press the start push button, to start the normal sequence. Well, I pressed the emergency button again. The crane has stopped immediately. Let's disable the emergency condition, and use the reset push button. Note that, the current project can be extended again. For example, it needs a similar sequence, to pick up stored boxes, and put them on the other two conveyors, on the other side of the crane. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed the automated warehouse project. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me.
If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.